A prominent tech and manufacturing company is pushing the boundaries of sustainable mining globally through the deployment of battery electric machinery and advanced autonomous technology. Now, the company behind the tech is delivering economic growth and sustainability advancements while shaping the future of mining. Lance Kawaguchi is the chairman of Middle East and Australia at Breton Technology and joins us now from Doha, Qatar. Lance, welcome. This is remarkable to say the least. Um, perhaps you can start by telling our audience who Breton Breton Technologies. Great. Number one, first, thank you for having me, Holly. So Breton Technology was started in 2016 by our um, visionary chairperson who wanted, who had a vision, who wanted to really focus on trying to electrify the mining industry because he knew that the criticality of the mining industry toward energy transition, but also knew that we needed to find a better way to help the environment. So since 2016, we've been investing quite heavily in heavy machinery but also on technology to try to find ways to reduce the carbon footprint. And I'm quite excited to say we're getting prepared for our Hong Kong IPO in the very near future. Incredible upcoming IPO. That's amazing. I mean, Breton Technologies is pretty much a rapidly leading, growing clean energy solution provider here. It's remarkable how it's trying to change and revolutionise the industry. What exactly is the overall mission here? Well, as I mentioned before, really the mission is to try to do our part to be sustainable. The mining industry is critical. It is very critical for our future energy transition. But what we're trying to do is find solutions that can be accretive to ways to still be able to mine, but reduce the carbon footprint and energy consumption. So for us, it's really leveraging big data, AI. Uh, we have over 112 different patents and technology, which is so, somewhat counterintuitive when you're thinking about heavy machinery but we're really more of a tech company and a, and a heavy machinery. So it's a very interesting time to be in the mining industry. Indeed. Uh, how exactly does the technology work? Well, it's really two parts. So there's few companies that focus on providing electric vehicles. What we try to do is focus on the entire ecosystem. So we call it our direct current photovoltaic energy system, which is a mouthful. But essentially, historically, mining operations, they're not connected to the grid, and they usually use diesel in, in, uh, engines to generate power to power their electric vehicles. So what we do is we actually use solar power, and we use direct current into our storage and into the vehicles. So number one, being that it's direct current to direct current, it's much more efficient than if you went to the grid or if you used a diesel uh, motor. But also by not using diesel, you don't have the emissions. So it's really, truly a carbon neutral type of event. It's so impressive. And even looking at those pictures that were just playing as you were speaking there, it's so impressive. And to see this kind of technology revolutionising the mining industry, why do you think this is so critical in the mining industry? Well, I think number one is that mining, most people, everybody wants energy transition, but most people don't realize how much it's dependent upon certain types of metals and mining, uh, metals and minerals globally. So we do need the metals and mining industry, which is critical for many countries, even for the economy. But there are ways that we can leverage technology to make it safer, make it more efficient, but also make it cleaner. Yeah, a key word there, making it cleaner. I guess, what do you say to the sceptics? And there will always be sceptics. Obviously, the mining sector is heavily reliant on diesel. Uh, what do you say to that? Well, I, I probably run into sceptics probably once, two, three times a day. I actually try to kind of lean mm -hmm. into it. I think it's very important because, for example, some of the sceptics actually help us guide, our, guide where we're going. So, for example, one of the big con uh, concerns or scepticism around electric is really the power. How are you gonna be able to maintain a long, long charge? So we focused on our technology so we can provide seven hours of sustainable electricity for two ton vehicles. So again, for skeptics, I think you're always gonna have skeptics, but I think it's how you really approach it. And I find that everyone who's a skeptic, if you listen to them, they usually have good information that you can, you can use to kind of help guide yourself. So I try to always bring people onto on side by kind of working with them. Incredible. Um, one other thing, I guess, how will this impact mining jobs going ahead as well? And I also understand that Breton has made significant progress in Africa. If you can also just talk us through why Africa is such an important advantage. 
Sure, um, great question. So first part, in regards to the jobs, I get this question quite often, but I think people don't realize, uh, according to PwC and Deloitte reports, the number one concern of mining CEOs is really the mining industry, the lack of employer uh, employ, employees. So within the next 10 years, over 50% of the mining industry are gonna be retiring. And there's a significant cliff because a lot of the younger generation, the millennials, Gen Z, are not going into mining. So what I always tell people is that we're trying to leverage technology to make it safer, but also autonomous. And autonomous has benefits in regards to number one, if you have a sh shortage in labor, this is also gonna help that, but also it's gonna help your efficiency overall. So I think it's important to, it's not really taking jobs away, it's really filling the gaps of where there's gonna be gaps in the future, but also it's evolving roles. So it's not taking jobs, but it's just evolving it into you know, different types of computer science, you know, different skill sets. So it's not eliminating jobs, it's just really evolving into different jobs. In regards to Africa, a great question. What we try to do is there's significant, as you know, Australia, Africa are primarily where you have most of these metals and mining. But part of the issues around Africa sometimes is around the geopolitical you know, stability. What we try to do is really focus on leveraging our state-owned enterprise partnerships by going in. These are long-term 30-year contracts, so you have very strong annuitized revenue, and the margins are quite I mean, very strong. So for us, what we try to do is access these very high potential markets, but also by mitigating some of the geopolitical risk. Incredible. Uh, Lance, we do have to wrap things up, but quickly, if you can tell us, I guess, about the future for Breton. It obviously is a super exciting time for the company with the upcoming IPO. Well, I think uh, for the next five to 10 years, our big focus is continue to invest in R&D. We also want to walk the walk and not just talk about uh, energy you know, uh, transition. So we've committed uh, publicly by 2028 that all of our manufacturing will be fully powered by solar. In addition, as I mentioned, we're gonna be gearing up for our Hong Kong IPO very, very shortly in the near term. And obviously my focus is really gonna to be to help the international uh, footprint to make sure that we can try to reach out to more of the mining uh, operations globally. Incredible work that you're doing and Breton Technology as well. Uh, Lance Kawaguchi, thanks for your time today. Great. Great to be here, Holly. Thank you.